a StarCraft II unit tier list. For many, many years, people have asked, what's the best unit? What unit is so strong you can't deal with it? And everybody has a strong opinion. And so do I. This is my decisive, my comprehensive, my always perfect and completely situational opinion-based unit tier list. And this is not for Cyril and Maru. I know they love my videos. But statistically, Grandmasters do not make up 99.999% of the people who search unit tier lists. Take a look at them. Are like, now I have all the information I need to continue not playing StarCraft 2. Smash the like button, subscribe, and move on with their lives. Watching the low APM challenge or what have you. So, this is going to be not for Cyril and Maru, but for me and you and everyone else who's obviously worse. Um, these are based on, uh, your average, more metal league, maybe diamond. I'm not going to say bronze because bronze is something in and of itself, but like a platinum diamond kind of baseline level. So in alphabetical order, we have here the adept, uh, the adept, very micro intent, very good unit can get a lot done, but honestly, eh, eh, pretty micro intensive has a tendency to uh, get tunnel vision uh, or induce tunnel vision in Protoss and, well, their opponents alike. It can be very good, but the return on investment. Mm. The Archon, on the other hand, always S tier. Especially, this is the one unit or one of the few units that is better for you Metal Leaguers than it is for, like, Hero or Maru or something like that. The Archon benefits, like, it. it I mean, look at it. It's just a big, angry ball of energy. It comes from Templar, which you probably should be building in the first place. Archon, bonus damage to biological. Not even ghosts can counter it, because it takes not one, not two, but three EMPs to take it down. And we know Terran players are not going to micro that much. So uh, the Archon is an S-tier unit. Always has been. Always will be. Baneling. A lot of people would put this up higher, but on a, eh. and I, it's, it really is kind of an F for me. Because a lot of people... No, it's A. It is A. It is a good unit. It's a key unit. A lot of people overvalue it because they see what the Banelings do. They see the effect of it on both sides. The Zerg, Terran, Protoss. Uh, but at the same time, you got to remember, each Baneling is 25 gas. It's very larva intensive. It's very easy to be wasteful with Banelings. While they're a key part of doing all that damage, they're definitely not as good as some silver leaguers might make you believe but they are a core unit for zerg so i definitely say uh they're worth it now the banshee this might be a controversial call but don't try this at home there are other better options the banshee even in in pro games is still kind of in that like why didn't you just build a battle cruiser or a liberator like the banshee is a whole lot of micro in a fragile only air to ground package it at one point, like, Wings of Liberty maybe was a staple opener. And I want to give a caveat here. Uh, this is when our first caveat. This is just generally in a unit composition. This is not like you shouldn't build one ever. Um, like, one Banshee for defense? Fine. I'm talking, like, adding five, ten Banshees in. It can be good, but I would not recommend it. I would not recommend it as an opener except for, like, one for defense. Pretty much all of this, like, you're going to want to make an Adept to put in your wall. We're just going to assume you know all this. I have hours, I have like 170 hours of the low APM challenge explaining all of this. I don't need to go over it again here. Uh, check it out. The Battle Cruiser. Unironically. <sighs> yeah. The only reason it's not S tier is because TVP. TVP it gets countered by everything, but honestly against Terran, and it's kind of like the Archon against Zerg and against Terran. Uh, it's very good. It's just a very expensive investment, and it doesn't have the utility in Terran versus Protoss. So it's really good. It's actually better in the lower leagues because players are less likely to micro intensely against it. Solid unit. Broodlord. Eh. Broodlord, a lot of work to make work. Uh, not terrible, not great. Um, doesn't have the range it once did, and infestors aren't as strong, so it's not a very user-friendly unit overall, but it is sometimes necessary. 
The carrier. Yeah. Carrier. Okay, you see where this is going. Um, for many reasons uh, that the battle cruiser is strong, the carrier, especially against players who are probably less likely to be intensely microwing, it is incredibly strong, especially when combined with Archons. Uh, it is just a great unit. And it's very expensive. It can go wrong. You can't just go straight to carriers, but even a single carrier can get a lot done in the in the Metal Leagues. The Colossus, on the other hand, is an important part, but it is not the core of any unit composition, really, nowadays. Usually you go for a few Colossi, maybe against Terran, almost never in any other matchups, because they're just so fragile and they're better options out of the Robo. Uh, the Corruptor... Now, this is a weird one. Um, it It's not great. It goes in the same Broodlord category. I didn't want to add too many tiers because this is just kind of a... The eh tier, or the B tier, I guess, um, is situational. It's like, sometimes you'll need these, but they're rarely your first choice. Um, they're a counter choice or something like that. Uh, and that... Same goes for the the cyclone. Sometimes necessary. No, no, no. Uh, sometimes necessary, but um, I would not put it as like a core unit. There are some unit compositions that you shouldn't be using, and I shouldn't be using. And even Gumiho, when he does it, shouldn't be using, but he does it anyways. <laughs> but that's a lot of micro for little... Uh, benefit dark templar not i mean they combine into archons which are s tier dts i almost want to put it at uh you know what all right b just so just so i have uh i'm no longer legally liable for people who make four colossi and are like winter they got countered by corruptors and you said both these units were bad um, so the Dark Templar cloak units are always going to be good. Banshees, I know there was a debate back in the Wings of Liberty about flying DTs and how Banshees were good, but that is because in Wings of Liberty as well, everyone started with a lower economy, had less workers to start. You could get, like, relatively few units in the early game had a much higher impact on hurting your opponent's economy in Wings of Liberty. Uh, nowadays... Every race can easily get uh, a two-base economy by the time higher tech units come out. So it's more difficult to make an impact uh, with units like the Banshee or the DT when you rush them out. And as part of a main unit composition, they're good or, or late game choice. Um, they can definitely work. I would definitely not put DTs at S tier. In fact, I'd almost put it at situational, but they're DTs. So the Disruptor. Everyone remembers when they hit with the Disruptor, all right? They all always remember, at, on either side, they remember the big hits. They don't remember the 74 times it missed, all right? They, um, Jimmy, uh, they say a picture um, has a, uh, either way, there you go. Um, here, here's, here's a meme. There you go. The Disruptors are one of the biggest baits in the game. The most clip-worthy, uh, I think. So, overall, eh. It's just a lot to control. Um, the Drone. Drone, the worst worker, in my opinion. Like... It, it doesn't really have any utility besides turning into a building, which denies it its opportunity to be a worker and mine things. So, uh, it is, it is, it goes in the B tier, in my opinion. It's great at doing its basic job, but past that, it's, it's more, uh, costly. Ghosts. You might have heard all the complaints. No. For the rest of us, it is a if you can micro, maybe, kind of situation. Um, 
Hellbats. Hellbats. Now, I rant about Hellbats, but as part of a late game unit composition, they're pretty good. Uh, as we've seen Maru trying. The big complaints I have is when people try to make them an early game unit against like 10 queens. That's like, like, Beyond comes up, he's like, I got six Hellbats, I got one Medivac, I got four Marines, and Dark says, I have 14 queens. To which, Beyond dies. I don't know. And then Micro's Marines for 25 more minutes. But either way. Hellions, on the other hand, I think are a unit that Terran players underestimate. They're great as an opener in every matchup. Though against Protoss, they can be a little dicier. I actually would put Hellions higher up as they have a lot more utility and they're pretty pretty tanky for what they are. There's a difference between Hellions and Hellbats uh, in that case. Yeah. Swarm Hosts. Don't. Just don't. Just just don't. Just don't. I don't care if you unbound the select all army. Just don't. The only Swarm Host you should build is the Accidental Ricky. The Accidental... That's... It. Just don't. Just... Just don't. Don't do it. Uh... Alright. Mutas. Eh. You might be noticing. There's a lot of... Eh. Units out there. But that's kind of... The way it is at the moment in uh, SC2. There are some queerly better units. Uh, especially for lower level players. If you want to be creative, you can always go to co-op. All right. We're going to... Jimmy, just... Okay. Got to crop it correctly. This is a YouTuber tier list. All right. I'm putting the minimum of effort in for the most clicks. All we need to do... What we got? We got, we got like eight more minutes. We got to get 21 minutes and 14 seconds. That's the perfect ideal YouTube. Put three ads in it. Wait, no, I'm not. This isn't Loco's channel. Calm down. Uh, Hydras. Honestly, it's, they're not incredible in the late game, but they're a really solid core unit. Especially... I... I, I'm adding so many caveats because it's so hard in in SC2 because units have so many different potential roles. Uh, but the Hydra is just a solid core unit, definitely not an S tier unit. But it's not really situational. You can make it work like ninety percent of the time in every matchup. Um, so the Immortal also goes in that same tier, A tier unit. Um. Oh my god. At this point, I just need to write a legal brief on each one. The point is to make quick... Okay, the Immortal is a solid core unit. It's not great in every situation, but it's great in most. The Infester... And, like, it's a good... It's, it's rarely bad, but it's another one of, like, are you really gonna make it worth it? The Mothership... No, just, you know what? <laughs> no. Situation, like, yeah, this is, use the active voice. All right. There you go. If you're Serral, Maru, or Hero, these units can definitely be S tier. Otherwise, just good. Just very good. It's so sim Like, the Mothership could be good. It has value, but it's another one of those units that probably baits you into making more mistakes than it covers for. The Liberator. Oh, this is a hard one because the Liberator is kind of like that as well. It's definitely not. An F or E tier. Is that the lowest league? That's the league I am in Brood War, so that's what we're referencing. Um, eh, like, it's a good core unit, but I think it gets overshadowed. I think you can, it, there are many situations in which you need Liberators, but you don't always have to have them. 
that's the key. The lurker. It's good. Very, like, there are some clear counters, but it's a good unit to get used to using. It can be used in pretty much every matchup at most times, besides the ultra late game, which is slightly puns intended. The Marauder. Yep. The Marine. S. Clear S. The Marine has had no patch changes effectively throughout Stark. It's always, I mean, it's the Marine. It's the Marine. And it joins the Medivac. Uh, like, it's Marines and Medivacs. Marauders sometimes can get replaced by ghosts or other units, but it's the Marine. Observer. Observer is a A tier unit. You know what? No, the Observer is S. I'm putting it in S. I would actually, this is one of the few units that goes in S for you guys and would go down for Sero Maru Hero because the Observer, you can siege up and have vision of like up to 20% of the map with a single Observer. It is actually a great unit to get a handle on. Uh, it's, in fact, it it's even at the pro level, a little bit of a balance complaint because of it. So, what about Infestor? The Infestor's on the screen. Oh my god, people coming in. Skip, go back. Don't skip to the end. You have to get the explanations for each one. This is, just to reiterate for those that skip forward, the rest of us tier list, not the best of us. The Oracle. Like, this is definitely... Maybe I should add five tiers, but this is, it's something you need to get used to. It's just like, I'm putting it here, even though it probably would be more of a B tier unit. Uh, because having a couple oracles is something that will always benefit Protoss players who don't just fly them into Marines. So not much benefit. The Overlord. Eight. Yeah, the Overlord's great. Overseer, also great. I mean, it's an overlord. Does a good job of being an overlord. The Phoenix. This is... It's kind of crowded out by a lot of other units right now. And it's a counter to Mutus. It can be an okay opener against Protoss and Terran. But it's another one of those things that... If you need it, you, you should build it. But not necessarily rely on it. The War Prism. S. There are a lot of very clearly good Protoss units. And this is the big complaint against uh, about Protoss historically. And the Probe. Name a more iconic combo than Archons, Carriers, Observers, War Prisms, and Probes. Okay. They're all very, very, very good at what they do. Um, just in general. Much like the Queen, which is good at everything. They, honestly, the Queen should be in a tier of her own because the Queen replaces the Zerg ne needing any units in the early game. The Queen, like, all right, new tier. Uh, no, this is Brenda tier. And then this is S. All right, there. That, that's more accurate. Uh, top tier. The queen, it, and unironically, it kind of has had to wear all the hats because hydras are not... In, in Brood War, hydras filled the same role as, like, a basic kind of ground, uh, anti-air and ground unit. But the roach is the cheap early game unit for Zerg. But that, especially in Legacy of the Void, with all these air units being strong... The queen costs only minerals. It doesn't cost any larva. In fact, it creates larva. Larva at a premium um, as you're building your economy as Zerg. And it doesn't cost any gas. It doesn't require a lair. So the queen has similar DPS to a Hydra in a just much more attractive package. And that is why you see queens as the staple in early, mid, and late game. You got to get used to using them, but... It's a queen. It it's it it does she does deserve her own tier. 
The Ravager. Mmm. Nah. The Raven. The Ravager is like, if you need it, it's a good part of those Mass Roach Ravager compositions, which are not the ideal, but you throw them in there, but they shouldn't be your goal. The Raven, now this is going to be a controversial choice. The Raven just adds too many things. It's a little clunky to use uh, overall, and it overlaps with a lot of your air units, like if you need it or if you want to work it into your build. But Mass Ravens, no matter how many Dutch content creator videos you watch, you might be like, but which one? There are so many, Winter. The answer is... Goddamn Dutch. I don't... Situational. Uh, the Reaper is good. Like, mmm... Okay, yeah. Mmm... It jumped from B to A tier. Okay? It jumped. I I would have put it in B, but it uses jetpack, jumped up to A. But hopefully the rest of the units knock it down. It's not a core unit, but it is a key part of early game terror. So. The Roach. This is a weaker A unit, but like it is your staple. You need something that isn't just Zerglings. Roach Hydra isn't really much of a thing, but um it, like, it has to be, and it's just a core unit. The SCV? Uh... A tier. It doesn't, like... Individually, it's not as good as the probe, but SCVs are the... have the most utility of any worker. They can fight, heal, repair, uh... Like, the only thing they're missing is the ability to build, like, with, like, a bunch of them. Um, but that would obviously be quite OP. The Sentry is a core unit that needs to be built, if only for Guardian Shield. Guardian Shield is the most important ability on the Sentry. The Guardian Shield, one Sentry can get so much value. Guardian Shield reduces ranged attack damage by two. Even if they're inside the Guardian Shield. Even if the Marines are kind of close. Marines only do, I want to say, 7 damage a hit is the base amount. So, just the sheer amount of damage a single sentry can reduce. This is why you'll see those late game unit compositions with Protoss. Look for it. Look for the little tickle balls. I said that out loud. Uh, look for them because... Uh, now, now moving on. They, they, the pros will always use... Guardian Shield. Guardian Shield is a big deal. The Stalker. The Stalker is a, a big part of the early game. Um, it is a, a... You don't want to rely on it. It's a fragile unit. It. I know a lot of pro players are using a large amount of Stalkers, especially in Protoss vs. Zerg. But it is a unit you want to kind of graduate out of. Uh, unless you're up against, like, a top-tier player. Siege tank. Honestly, great in every matchup. Good to great in every matchup. With good control, it's good. With great control, it's very good. I don't think it has, like, that, that huge cap. Like, it can't be in every army composition. But it can be in most. Unlike the Tempest which is only there to counter Broodlords and Battlecruisers, and when you're out of minerals in the late game against anything else. The High Templar. Good core unit. The Thor is S tier. People underestimate the Thor, even in TVT. I think in the late game, like, obviously TVZ, it's a big thing. Against Sky Toss, it's great. It comes with uh, two base armor, I believe. I need to, like... <laughs> Don't worry, nobody's going to verify. There are going to be two people in the comments nobody reads. But um, the Thor, at one point, had two base armor. I'm not sure what it has now. Uh, it does. It does. Wait, no. No, it has one base armor. It used to have two base armor. It actually got nerfed. But it is an incredibly tanky unit 
and the high impact cannons, the secondary, it brings a big ass cannon. It's kind of the counter to late game. Um, the only downside is its weakness against a bunch of smaller units like Zerglings or like they even counter the unit next up, the Ultralisk. But against Zerglings or like charge lots, it needs some support. Ultras. <sighs> I couldn't fit it into the A tier. They're too thick and too clunky. Sometimes ultras are good, but a lot of the time they're a waste of money. Like it as a as Idra once said, when I'm really far ahead and I want to lose, I make ultras. And ultras have had several buffs since then. But it still does apply that if you're not trying to finish the game, they're a finisher. They're not a like core unit. They're a I'm going to kill them before I need better units. I type of thing. The Viking. Solid A. This is one of the most solid A tier units out there. The Viking is pretty good in TVZ and even better in the other matchups. It's actually a good core ground unit as well. The ground attack, two shots probes. And I believe, I'm not 100% two shots SCVs, but it's not bad on the ground. Because on the ground, it does extra damage to mechanical, which includes stalkers, immortals. Uh, sentries, probes, SCVs, tanks, Thors, other Vikings, like, all Terran buildings are mechanical. The Viking is, while you shouldn't be building a bunch of it all the time, every game, I think you're never really going to feel like you have, you're never going to regret having at least some Vikings in your army. The Viper is an incredible unit. The Viper is the best Zerg spellcaster by far, besides the Queen, which is the Queen. Uh, it is countered by feedback and ghosts, but when used well and covered well, like, if you're going to learn one spellcaster is Zerg that isn't the Queen, it's the Viper. The Vipers, their abilities can be incredibly punishing and are relatively easy to use. Uh, they're all long range, Abduct, Blinding Cloud, or Parasitic Bomb. Uh, they're all pretty intuitive in how to use them. Uh, I think if you're going to focus on learning one later game unit, it's it's the Viper. Viper should be A of High Templar, is A? No. No. The High Templar, part of the reason it's in the A tier, is because it can become Archons, which are just better. You don't necessarily want to have a bunch of High Tem like You don't need to rely on High Templars as part of your army. But against things like Archons, you need things like Vipers as Zerg. It fills a slightly different role. Like the High Templar are also Archons in this scenario. So uh, the High Templar don't have as much requirement to be in the later game or just general army composition as the Viper does. Void Ray. Yeah. I know, it shoots up, it shoots down. It is an incredibly fragile unit for the cost. Uh, it takes up a lot of supply. It is one of those units that just kind of walks or glides over people. Uh, why is Mothership so low? Always lose to it? Well, maybe you should stop going Banshees against Motherships. Widow Mines. They're good. I wouldn't put them at S tier, actually, because they can backfire a lot, and they are kind of micro-intensive. I do complain about them all the time, but they are a unit that can can hurt the Terran almost as much as their opponent when when used poorly. So the the friendly fire and the backfiring potential is definitely uh, is definitely there. The Zealot. Yeah. The Zealot for the cost is just... It, it's just that good. It is a very... It, it, when not ready or prepared to deal with charge lots, between the prism um, and the sheer tankiness of charge lots, now obviously they don't shoot up, 
but they can even if they're getting attacked they can easily target down buildings and stuff like that though that's not necessarily the use they are not the easiest unit to use well but even when you use them poorly it's still pretty good <laughs> Archon Charge Lot is a staple army composition um, and will get you quite far, especially combining in warp prisms and maybe eventually carriers. Zerg Links. It's not situational. You always got to have Zerg Links, but they they definitely don't have the, the range of potential that things like Marines and Charge Lots do. They're definitely more of a also, some Zerglings, not I'm going Zerglings type of army composition. So, quick summary. The Queen is the best unit in the game. No matter how much I complain about anything else, is it imbalanced? I don't think so. Is it, especially in the lower leagues where you have to learn to hotkey your Queens, I'd recommend watching a couple games of Serral and see how he does his Queens if you're actually willing to learn. Um, but he has a, he has a, essentially Cyril has a select all queens hotkey. He just hotkeys all his queens in just in case. He has inject queens on a different hotkey. Sometimes he'll put creep spread queens. He sometimes has three hotkeys for queen. Three. That's like, and then like two or three for his army. So, uh, like just in case, right? Like that, they, they are a core unit at all times. And then you got things from Archons to Charge Lots. You got Vipers um, for late game for Zerg. And remember, the S tier is probably 80 to 90% of your games. You can build them and not regret it. That's most of it. A is the same thing. You won't regret it, but they won't necessarily uh, be a game ender for you. These are all great units in many scenarios, but they do have some clear weaknesses whether it's their usability uh or just their lack of countering some of the s tier units and then b tier like you got to think about why you're using these adepts broodlords ravens disruptors these units either one they can backfire two they cause you to tunnel vision three they're easily countered and four they uh require a ton of investment and then the banshee the swarm host and the mothership are all units that I think uh, are 90% of the time, you will regret it. You will regret it. Even though it feels like, like you should regret it at the very least. Once again, the Banshee is, is definitely the most questionable here as a potential defensive unit. But what do you think? Do you agree? Have you lost to some of these B and E tier units? Uh, or are you above Silver League? You tell me. Leave a comment argue with me we got to do more tier lists there's only so many tier lists you can make i can't make a race tier list okay you can't just put that as the title we got to do something a little more nuanced uh a lot of words being said like so uh anyways thank you for watching check out this video jimmy uh if there's no video there well then make sure to subscribe on patreon or to my second channel and you can probably find some more content there and uh, otherwise, thank you for watching. And now you know how to play StarCraft and don't need to watch anyone else. Good luck, have fun. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Stay tuned.